ladies and germs, welcome to the podcast known as the show to be named later. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, alongside perhaps the only person in Kansas City proper not to have watched the Kansas City Chiefs game last night. I don't know if that's that's the case. Is that the case or did you watch the game? No, I had to watch that game because I was, I was rooting for the Bills, unfortunately, but yep. you know. Yep. That is... Uh, Widely becoming the, the the Bills' nemesis is uh, where you live. Uh, yeah, they just do not have luck with them at all. But we're going to get to that very, very shortly. But uh, first of all, I'd like to say now, we were off for about a week. I want to wish everybody a happy Martin Luther the King Day. Um, and I, I want to make sure because, you know, some people were saying, well, they didn't do a show last week because Johnny was so upset that the Packers and the, and the Lions both won a, a playoff game and the Vikings weren't even in the playoffs. So he couldn't, you know, it's not the case at all. It's like I told Sergeant Hulka, this is the cold and flu season. Uh, and so, you know, and we had some other obstacles. We just weren't able to uh, to get it done. Uh, but I did want to recognize it like that. We're not skipping it at all. Um, great great deal of respect and honor for the man. Um, I do wonder sometimes because I, I ask people this all the time, black or white, like, you know, when, when they had the vision for this holiday, do you think they, they were like, I got an idea. Let's have 12 NBA basketball games on, you know, to honor Martin Luther the King, but you know, that's neither here nor there. I do have a quick question about that for you though, because uh, Noah, you are, you are, better as far as following uh what is trending on social media you're you you keep your ear to the ear to the the pavement so to speak as far as you know what's talked about on timberwolves twitter or whatever do you know the reason why so the wolves had always been a staple on martin luther the king day and and not just a staple of playing the game but they they always used to host them you know where you had sam mitchell would come out and say a few words or you know god forbid trent tucker because nobody ever knew what the fuck he was talking about because he, you know he's he's got tuckerisms that 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 defy the english language by by all stretches uh but it's not that we haven't even hosted a game on MLK Day, but we, we, we just haven't played on, on MLK Day. And is that because we've sucked for so long? I, I think Charlotte played. I, wh why do the Wolves never get to play on, on, on the holiday any longer? Well, I have no idea. I know. I mean, Christmas was a big one. The, the Wolves should have been playing on Christmas. But again, I think how would you have known the Wolves were going to be the one seed right now? I mean, right. it, but um no, I didn't. I'm I didn't talking know. about in the bad times. We always were, and and it was always a nationally televised game as well. Well, I didn't know that. That that's interesting. Um, I mean, I know they do. The team will do some MLK stuff, but I I actually didn't know that we were. It was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for us to host, but okay. All right. Well, uh, well, you can see because um, I've got a you know I've I've got to, no I'm not trying to you know I'm not trying to. Uh, rub people a certain way and they oh well johnny's a, wow that's a great white guy there because he i love this shirt because my my good friend chris gave this uh to me you can see i'm not a big atlanta hawks fan uh but he gave me this sweatshirt there was a time i, I was in the doldrums when it came to the nba i was very very down on him and all of a sudden this sweatshirt uh showed up on my on my uh, doorstep and he said, you know, it's not Christmas, but there you go. You, you need a little boost uh, in, 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 a, in a direction. And so uh, I'm very proud of the sweatshirt. That's why I'm rocking it today. Now I got to tell you, Noah, I'm pretty excited uh, because for the first time in the show to be named later history podcast form, just today, somebody came up to me and said, man, I was watching that Oklahoma city game the other night. And you know what, what you and Noah were talking about is exactly right. If they don't fix something very quickly, the turnovers and the crunch time and all that, and he goes, and, and he, he brought up points from it. So it wasn't like he was just like, well, I want to see what the background's going to be. You know, the next time I watch it, he actually brought up points that we had brought up. Um, which tells me that people are actually listening, you know, to what, what we're saying. So that was a pretty cool moment uh, for, for, for us. Um, so thank you, Minnesota Mike, not Mike Conley, but uh, I appreciate that. I like the feedback um, and I like it when, you know, and I, I don't like to honk honk too much, but we've been known to at least make observations that have been fairly accurate. So um, that's where I want to go with first and foremost, because 
I am not here to doom and gloom or anything like that. But since January 1st, man, we've lost five games, dude. And it took what? Almost two months for you guys to, or for us to win five games in the, in the first part of the year. And so I'm not hitting panic. I'm not, I'm not shaming my team or anything like that. I'm just saying the things that we talked about the last time around um, are, are continuing in very disturbing manners. Uh, if you will, your, your thoughts right off the bat. Cause I think, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I, I do. And now uh, for the record, I didn't, I wasn't able to watch the thunder game. I uh, had some friends over um, and I actually was watching some football. I was a little pissed that we were missing the game. Cause I felt like that was more the game of the night compared to some of the yep. other games I was watching. But um, you know, cause I heard how the game went and then I believe we were down, came back and then they came back um, to some, some, turnovers in in the fourth so no, we had that game one we had it one again and, and, and that's and that's that is the thing that i think this team is learning through but to your point they're gonna have to fix soon um because I, i'm not gonna discredit like that thunder team is insanely good that is a great that is a great team but yes we had that game one i still think we're a better team but to your point i like it's something they're gonna need to fix but at the same time, you don't know what you need to fix if you don't go through it. So I, while I think these are, are, are good opportunities for the team, it is still somewhat concerning. And, and a guy like Anthony Edwards, who I believe turns it over the most, is yep. going to need to fix it. Yep. And what I, I guess some of the questions that I have about this, because, you know, I hear other folks talk on their 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 sports shows and, and I don't want to copy anything. I, I do listen to what they have to say. And one of the things they talked about was why can't you just be happy that your team is what 32 and 10 or 30, or 30 and 12 uh, number one team in the Western conference. Why can't you just appreciate that and go, because I'm a selfish, selfish Minnesota fan. And um, you know, we talked about it earlier that you ain't won anything yet. And, and so I don't want us to fall into the trap of, wow, we've got this great team. And then suddenly they fall into the blueprint of, well, if you want to be a true Minnesota team, then you must fuck it up in the last three minutes of the game. Okay. In a game that you, you should have and did win for the majority of it. And, and, and I don't want the wolves to fall into uh, that crevice because it is so hard to dig out. I don't want them to, to be another Minnesota team that just breaks your heart when you know that they're the better squad on the floor. And, um, you know, we brought up the, the concerns last time around, but they're, 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 they're glaring right now. And, and Anthony Edwards had turned the ball over and, and they're not even like, wow, a great defensive play, a great defensive stop. by Oklahoma. They're going, here's the basketball. We want you to have it. OK, and whether it's Jade McDaniels or Anthony Edwards and what I don't get, Mike Conley had probably the worst game that he's had as a Minnesota Timberwolf against OKC. He did not shoot the ball well. And I, he's still a guy I'd say, you know what? Keep shooting, man, because he's going to figure it out. But what I didn't understand, because I had already chalked that up as a victory for the Wolves. I did. That's how how well we were playing until the last four or five minutes of the game. And. What I don't understand is right now you have a very smart point guard in Mike Conley, and why is he not taking control of the offense in that time instead of an Anthony Edwards just just throwing the ball away for no reason, um, dribbling into double, triple teams, whatever it is. The spacing is absolutely was absolutely ridiculous in the last few minutes. We could not do. Like I say, what had gotten us there the entire game when we're not moving the basketball, we're playing ISO, blah, 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 blah. And we have now lost to good teams, but we've lost to subpar teams as well in this stretch since January 1st, or, or at least not finals contenders. Okay, I don't think Dallas or the Knicks or New Orleans are really NBA contenders. And so this, this really has me worried right now because um, I'm, I'm not seeing any kind of improvement over the last, and, and it's hard because now you do have a Charlotte tonight 
and yeah, we probably run the table on them. And, and the next three or four games, we probably run the table, but it's not going to matter until you get to the playoffs. And if you're putting up the same kind of, the same kind of bullshit that we've seen, the playoffs are going to be heartbreaking for Wolves fans. They are. Yes. I, I like, it'll be interesting to see where I think this team goes. Um, I, I'm not entirely panicking. Um, like you said, I, we're not hitting the panic button. This is still a great team, um, but it is stuff they need to figure out. I think late in the game, to your point, I would like Anthony Edwards probably playing off the ball and not, not take, I, I understand he's your closer. He is absolutely your closer. He's your home run hitter. Um, but Minnesota runs a, an offense where, um, I believe Chris Finch de described it as they kind of they don't really call plays. It, it's really just kind of see what the defense is putting up. Uh, it's a free flowing offense, and they like the ball movement, and I think it works. But I also think it's leading to these turnovers. A couple people have mentioned that that they think the the way that this offense is formed is what's leading to these turnovers. Because I've never remembered a Timberwolves team turning the ball over this much personally. Check this out: sixteen. They're averaging sixteen and a half turnovers at home. I know. So I would like to see, I would like to see somewhat of a change. I think late game, I understand the, the mixing minutes of Conley, but even if honestly, I, I still kind of trusted Jordan McLaughlin out there in the, in the end, um, handling the ball a little better. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see what, where this takes the team, especially when we get into trade season, we get into buyout market additions because the Wolves will be making additions. They will be making, right. I, I, I can see us being active in the bio market. I can see us being active in the trade market. Um, and that can either help your team a lot um, in, in, in sense of chemistry. I think this team has a lot of chemistry right now. I'm curious to see um, what kind of vets typically you get, you're getting a vet for a team like this. Right. Um, I'm curious how that, that will impact us. Um, but to your point, like we get to the playoffs and they're they're going to have to figure it out for sure because there are teams that I think we've found the way to beat the Wolves is is quick ball movement and and when when we're kind of flustered I think it also flusters us on on offense um, when we're moving 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 and that's just kind of where I think Ant gets a little he, I think he's thinking before he's doing or he's doing before he's thinking I should say um, and so it, it'll be interesting. Well, okay, and so, I mean, it, there still has to be, you know, we talked about age for some of these guys, and and but you're still a professional basketball team. And, and what I've been seeing lately in the last three, four, five minutes of, of games that we have not been able to close out, which we, we had been earlier in the year, it, it reminds me of, you know, when it, you're in fifth or sixth grade and the first time that you see a full court press in basketball and everybody freaks out, wait, what, what, you don't know it. Right. And they even had to change the rule. Oh, no press in, in fifth and sixth grade. You got to wait till whatever. It seems like that, except for the fact that they've been there before and they've seen this before. So everybody just settled down. But um, the offense, you know, you talked about, there is no set offense. It's just kind of free flowing. However, in the last four or five minutes, there is an offense being run. It's dribble the ball at the top of the key until there's five seconds left on the shot clock and then throw up a terrible shot. And, and, and suddenly you have, you know, we talked about the space or I, I talked about the spacing that Edwards isn't able to get to the, to the basket because for whatever reason, Towns is now drifting towards the basket. So you have two huge bodies in the lane where Towns, for three quarters is playing perimeter game, um, you know, which we don't offensive rebound anyways. So I don't know why he's in, in the lane because offensive rebounding has killed us all year. Um, but the spacing, the ISO, the dribbling into triple, triple team, double team, whatever it is. Um, it, it just looks like they are frantically playing the game when that should be the time that everyone just settled down and say, let let's keep the blueprint of what got us to this point where we we don't have to nurse a five or six point lead. Let's take it up to fifteen. Yeah, I, I mean, so 
you'd have to agree on that. I, I think late game mentality just feels different than the rest of the game, right? Like when you're in that late game, it, it feels different when you're running, um, when it, when it's a close game and you're running tight offense. So I, I think what Kat and Ant have done well is adjust to each other and, and, and their roles up until the fourth quarter. And that's where I think there's still maybe a little struggle um, and figuring out what that offense looks late game um, because you'd like to put the ball in Ant's hands for the most part. Um, but I'm also, I mean, there are days too when it, I, I think we should give the ball to Cat and when he's having well, those games. And, and so that's where it, I think it's it's hard right now it, is figuring out what that looks like in the fourth. Well, and I I, I, I had said that earlier today, uh, and, and I, I think I said that, was it the Boston game where I, where Cat was stuck on 19 points for like eight minutes. And to me, it's the shot selection that has really got a bug up my ass right now um, in the last three, four minutes of the game when they're trying to close it out. The shot selection is terrible. And, you know, I guess if I had my druthers, I would prefer Cat shooting the ball, the primary three-point shot, than doing anything close to the basket. That whole floppy McFlopster, you know, where he calls for the foul and he doesn't get the foul, um, and now he's on the floor and they're bringing it back and he's still laying down. He's not doing as much complaining, but, I mean, I'd rather I, – I think his three-point shot is more money than anything else. So, I don't know. that. We'll see what happens. And it, Like I say, it, to me it's hard to judge what what is going on because they're going to have – a stretch of games where, where the opponent is not uh, as talented as the teams that I'm talking about that we've lost to. Um, so you can't get like an even uh, idea of exactly who is taking the floor. Now, you know, in years past, they would have dropped games to Detroit or San Antonio or tonight you got the Charlotte Bobcats in town. Oh, sorry, the Hornets in town. And you would hope that they would just tend to business and get it done um, but then what does that mean? Because I believe we have OK City one more time in the next couple of weeks. I think so. Last okay. one. And so so then then you, you got to, you know, you got to You got to figure out which team is going to play every night consistently um, and and what they're doing to because, like I say, if, if you drop to the three or the four, so you're going to see tougher teams in the playoffs that, you know, are going to be playing for house with, with house money, not figuring that's oh, the wolves. It's their first time in this position. But if you have a number one seed, it's a, it's a quite a different deal, at least for that first round game. Um, and so, or the first, the, the first round. And so I, I, I got to believe that they, they just have to keep their foot on the pedal here because um, I don't, I don't want them to, to dip down. And then suddenly, you know, oh, geez, you know, Dallas, shouldn't give us any problems, but suddenly of a, a, a seven game series goes to seven games that should not have, you know? Yeah. I, now what I was going to say is maybe it's a hot take. I don't think it is. I still think regardless of, of the issues that this team has, I think it's the best team in the NBA right now from what I've seen. And I think that with how this team is constructed and their mentality, I think in a seven game series, a, a, a one-off game is is different, and and when you're playing other teams, but a seven-game series with the same team, I like the Wolves against almost any team. Yeah, every team in this league. Like, yes, they're going to give you some troubles, and yes, if we lose a game to to these late-game turnovers, whatever, I think an old Wolves team absolutely would have came back the second game and done the exact same thing. But I just have a weird feeling about this team that this team will learn a little better in the playoffs, in these tighter games, in these, when you've got vets. And I, I just, I just think this team in a seven game series is better than any other team in this league right now. Wow. Wow. With any, any, other, okay. All right. Uh, I we, we saw the Celtics. We saw, I, know, the Thunder. I, know. I, I would we say those the teams. for sure. Celtics still give me, I still think we're a better team. Well, now we have not faced the Bucks, so I don't know. Yeah, what that's they look true. Like. That is right. true. I believe uh, they are they are one of the teams that we will be facing in the next uh, two or three weeks as well. And um, the, the Sixers are another tough one to me. Yeah, but. yeah. Uh, 
you know, you're, you're at the halfway point of the season now already. Um, so there, there are, there are a lot of things that, that should be blazingly evident about this team as, as far as fans, how we look at it. And there are still some question marks and, uh, you know, I guess we'll, we'll hope for the best on that. KG has Ant as his midseason MVP, by the way. Interesting. Uh, I'll send you that video. He gets very, um, he's very passionate. I'll send you. It's, it's, I love it. I love cool. the ticket. And I, I did want to give this out because as frustrated as I have been with Anthony Edwards, uh, as far as the end of the game, I, it, it's really, you know, it's hard to stay mad at fun boy though, because right now, dude, it, you know, and I, I, I'm not going to, I, I cannot stand listening to Stephen A. Smith, you know, but I heard but him. He gave him his flowers, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, why wouldn't you, you know, and, and uh, I am telling you, and I, I don't because you can't compare a player to somebody uh, to, his, to his greatness, um, to his air greatness. But I am telling you that Anthony Edwards is showing me more of Michael Jordan every fucking day that I watch him play, you know, and, and Stephen A. Smith, he's like, I'm telling you this brother, he is, he got Vince Carter, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, put these guys on national TV because I want to see that brother play. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, Kobe, Vince Carter, whatever, this guy is showing me more shades of Michael, you know, like, you know, everyone want to you want to compare Michael to Kobe or to LeBron or or whomever. You you can't because they're completely different kinds of players. But Edwards is doing things that are so Jordan esque right now that it's hard not to compare. And when he says he wants to be better than Michael Jordan, which you know, hats off to you, buddy. You know, I mean, that's why not set the bar high. But there are some things that he is doing on the court that I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I feel bad for you because you didn't live through those, those years of Michael Jordan in his prime when you could see him on a TBS game on a Thursday night and you would just be like, oh, he, are you really? And Edwards is doing that. And I don't see a lot of other guys in the NBA that are consistently giving you a highlight where you just go, man, that was sick. I don't know of anybody that could have done that. You know, you see Jalen Brown try to do Anthony Edwards dunk off the backboard and I, fail. Well, I, and I had heard that, you know, Edwards to me, it was just so spot on that it was spur of the moment. I'm like, uh, okay, I can't do anything with this, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it off, and then I'm going to hammer it down. I know that that's been fashionable. There have been a couple other guys that have done that. Um, and so, yes, I'm prejudiced when it comes to that's my guy. That's my dog doing that. But um, once again, there was another play where he uh, – I got to think now. It wasn't Oklahoma City. It was, uh, it was another tough one. Oh, it was, uh, he came underneath the basket and did a little dipsy duel. And then he got a technical again because he thought he was fouling. And I was like, man, yeah, no, he, he was, let your actions speak. Even if you thought you were fouled. Now, I think he's got like eight, maybe nine technicals already this year, which is stupid. I would just, let me enjoy the fact that you made an incredible acrobatic play that no one else can make and just let me enjoy it because that took all the joy out of it when he got teed up for that yeah when you're in it's a move that everybody would be talking about on sports center but you negated it by getting the technical for complaining about it yeah he's getting um more and more passionate every game i think and the the ones that kill me are when he's clapping at the refs yeah. i i just like if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna yell at him, yell at him. But like clapping at him is to me like you're just you're asking for that. Yep. Um, and then he's gonna stop getting fouls going to the basket because there's gonna be refs that have chips on their shoulder because, like you said, not the way that he's presenting what he's complaining about, but that. 
it's disrespectful. It the exact same thing that happened to Cat in his early days that he yep. solidified himself amongst NBA refs as a as someone who's just going to scream at you no matter what. So they're not going to call it. And so that's my little nervous about Anthony Edwards there. But the the more he solidifies himself as one of the best players in the NBA, he's going to get a better whistle. He just is. Yeah. So. Yeah. And 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 back to uh, ticket. Uh, because I do, because because it might sound like I'm I'm harping on Edwards um, a little bit. It's just frustration, just being a Minnesota fan, um, and I and I'm not harping on Edwards because man, I I think that dude is the shit. Okay, but um, one thing I wanted to bring up was, I mean, I remember so when Ticket was. Just coming up, and you got to remember, he was 19 years old when he got drafted, um, did not go to college. He came right out of high school. And so there was a time when the Wolves, when they started making the playoffs finally, and their first one was against the Houston Rockets, uh, and then they had the, the, the Sonics. Well, for most folks that don't know, I think your dad knows about the Seattle Supersonics. Yeah. Uh, they played the Sonics, and then there were these – like a, a stretch of years where we played either the Spurs or the Lakers every year. And we always could have won that series and ended up never doing it. And there were times I would watch these games with my good friend, Marty and uh, down the stretch ticket would miss some big, big baskets where it was, no, they, they, they fed him the ball. He, he was the guy that you wanted to take the shot and he just couldn't, couldn't connect. And I remember driving back from Marty's house and going, you know, here's the deal though, man. I'm like, what the fuck? This is the guy that we put all of our eggs in his basket and I like him, but when is he going to be the superstar that we invested in, you know? And, and, and so my point is, is that Edward's a lot younger uh, than, than ticket was when ticket was making year after year after year. And, and was, he had impacts on the playoffs, but he wasn't that guy that was like, Oh my goodness, we can go to him every single time and he's going to knock it down. He wasn't making clutch shots when we needed him the most. And I was like, okay, that's fine. He's a good player, but he's not a great player. Obviously I was wrong. So I, 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 I'm going to give that to Edwards because I know that you brought up age and, and, and where he's at in his NBA career. And, and, uh, and, and so, you know, Rome's not built in the day. You know what I mean? Like there is a lot of growth for, for this young man. Um, but you know, if I had, if I had my choice of watching grass grow or paint dry or Anthony Edwards being a motherfucking superstar, I'm going to take the third one every single time. And he can, he can mess up in that time. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and so I, I just, I just want to make that disclaimer that I was not, um, down on Edwards because he is my favorite Minnesota Timberwolf to watch minus one ticket. Yeah. You know, and Edwards may someday, but I don't think so. Ticket is always going to be my number one guy forever. Uh, but I'll tell you, man, Edwards is the real deal and, and is going to, like you said, be the face of the NBA for sure. He's, he's easily solidified. I need to see him. I, I, I feel like we need to win a playoff series, but yep. to me, he is, he is solidifying himself right now as the, the second best wolf of all time. Um, and I think he easily has not only Serbiak. Well, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. He, he easily has the potential or the path to being the best Timberwolf of all time and, and being I agree. the I way agree. we talk about KG is, is the way we talk even better about Anthony Edwards. So, so do you, okay. Because I know, man, it's already, we've been talking for well, half hour. I know it. I know it. I know it because there are other things that we have to cover in a short period of time because the wolves are going to be starting soon. Um, do you think, because I, I love what you said that he could become the best Minnesota Timberwolf of all time. And I, I do think that he has uh, that glimmer of, of hope in that. Do you think that he is a guy that will be here for the next 10 years? So that's, that's tough because I think you always, when you have guys like this on your team, you always are crossing your fingers and you're like, well, they would, they could, they can say how much they love your city and, and whatnot. But you know, they, 
you never you never know what could happen. Um, Anthony Edwards has said multiple times he wants to bring Minnesota championship, and awesome. I'd like to, I'd like to believe it. So, um, okay, you know, he got his contract extension. I th I think if we can can continue to put a winning team around him, absolutely. Another question, then, you know, I I don't know, like, so for those that don't know, the show to be named later used to be for I don't know six months uh, a show on Care Eleven. Uh, when it was a, a television show. And and so I got to actually be in the locker room, talk to these guys, and that's, you know, why I love tickets so much. Um, but as, so I, I don't know Anthony Edwards, like I, when, when you get to actually talk to these guys and kind of see what their personality is. And um, with ticket, I've, you know, I've, I've got the footage I can show you, man. Like, I was like, hey man, you're gonna be here until you you retire. He's like, man, you spitting in my face, man. What? And and he knew what I was asking him because I never wanted him to ever be in any other city than Minneapolis. Okay. Um. And and when I I asked him about, it, I was like, nah, man, you're you're staying here, right? And he's like, man, it's like you're spitting in my face. But he knew where that came because every Timberwolves fan was thinking that. Now my question is. Let's say in a perfect world, the Wolves win an NBA Finals with Anthony Edwards. Would you think, without ever talking to him personally, ever had met him, do you think Anthony Edwards is one of these chaches? I'm not saying Edwards is a chach. I'm saying chaches that say, now it's not about how many rings I can win. It's about how many rings I can win on multiple teams because that shows you what a great player I am because I went from Toronto to San Antonio to, okay, you understand what I'm saying? Like Kawhi Leonard, man, he was Mr. Canada and he walked away from it. You got LeBron James that have won rings in how many cities? Okay. And, and like, it, that's a clout thing that they think that they are better than anybody else because they win on, or is Anthony Edwards going to go, you know what? I won here. And now I want to build a dynasty here. Me being the, the guy that, that is orchestrating this whole dynasty thing, I'll win five, one for the thumb here in Minnesota, rather than going to LA, Miami, New York, wherever you want to go. Your thoughts on that? So I don't think he's, so t to me, you know, he wins a championship. Um, the thing with, with guys like Kawhi and, and, um, Kawhi wasn't chasing the money. Kawhi is always going to get the money, right? right. He's always going to get the max, whatever it is. The thing, the, the trend that, that is a little scary to me. And, and I really hope Ant is not that guy. When I, I look at guys like a James Harden, a Kevin Durant, a Kawhi Leonard, a Paul George, yep, that they're playing with who they, that yes, they want to win a championship. I don't know if it's, I want to win a championship in this city, this city, this city, this city, it's I'm going to go here to play with him because I want to play with him and win a championship with him. More of a, a like a buddy cop kind of thing. Right. Uh, so I know Ant's building a lot of relationships with, with, with guys. I, I think about a, a Tyrese Halliburton. I think about a couple other guys that – Well, bring his ass to fucking Minnesota. And, but that's what I'm saying. If Minnesota's not going to do it and Orlando will, then he's going to go to – and that's, that's where – and I don't want to believe that, but that's also the trend of what these star players are doing right now. But then you look at a, a guy like a Steph Curry. Steph Curry is going to be a warrior for life. Personally. Yeah, right, right. Okay, but but now that, okay, that brings me, but that to me does not, I mean, doesn't anybody ever go on merit anymore? Doesn't anyone say, you should respect me because of what I did with what I had? Rather than saying, I'm going to go somewhere because I want to win it with my friends or because these guys are better ball players or uh, you understand what I'm saying? Like, and to me, that makes no sense because I would like to say, this is what I did. I built it from the ground floor up and I was still a relevant NBA finals team in Minnesota instead of having to go buy or attempt to buy a championship with guys that are better than uh Jaden McDaniel. You know what I mean? Like 
And and okay. that is the Minnesotan in you is Minnesotans typically uh, Minnesotans are proud of what they what they do, what they have, what they what they build with with what they have. So because I'm the same way, I, I'm I'm you know, and and that's where I look at Kevin Love and a Carl Anthony Towns, right? I think Carl Anthony Towns could be a wolf for life as well. And yes. he is a very he is a very um he seems extremely loyal to the to this franchise amidst I don't know how many trade rumors this guy is in. Um, I think if Carl Anthony Towns is leaving the Wolves, it's the Wolves that are shipping him out, not him leaving right, the Wolves. Right. Um, and I think about the contrast with Kevin Love and what he he could have been proud of what he could have built in Minnesota, but he wanted to go play with his friends and win a championship in Cleveland. And that those players are similar to me, and I I, I think Ant can be. This the same way of it. I mean, if I'm getting drafted, and I'm and I'm playing with whoever is drafting me, to me, I'm forever grateful to that franchise for for one, just allowing me to to, to play professional basketball, and I want to see what I can do with that franchise. And and I I think Anna is there in the sense of he seems like he wants to win a championship and he wants to make Minnesota, um, you know, a, a dynasty like like you right. mentioned and um. I think if he has the right people around him, I think this guy is a, is a wolf for life. Okay. All right. Well, I would, I would love that. I, you know, and, and I, it goes back because with ticket, you, you pretty much knew that it was the end of his time here. And the reason that I was okay with it was because the ticket wasn't ever going to win an NBA championship. Uh, in Minnesota. And so that was the easier, but the fact that he didn't demand that you need to, to trade. And I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but it certainly wasn't public, you know, where the LeBron James, well, I just get to choose wherever I want to go because, okay. Uh, and so that, that like softened the blow when we did trade him uh, because I was like, you know what, go get your son, you know, and, and he gave credit as soon as he won it, he said, this was what for soda. And I wish I could, I mean, I was happy for him, but it didn't do anything for me for Boston to win another NBA championship, you know? Um, so I, I really do hope because when you have lightning in a bottle, like Anthony Edwards, obviously you want to contain that here in Minnesota as much as you can. And, and so I, I was just curious because, you know, with public enemies saying, don't believe the hype. I think there is a point where Edwards is going to buy into what everyone's saying about him. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but nobody says, you know, I, I'm going to Minneapolis to watch the Wolves. This, this is a great opportunity for me, whether it's endorsements or anything like that. Um, the, the one hang up I had when Ticket was here was, why didn't you market this motherfucker? Put him on every billboard from here to Anoka to Bemidji. Okay. Why are you not marketing the best player in the NBA? And, and which would only cause someone to say, look, man, I can get mine somewhere else because it's not. And that's something that I, I worry about with Edwards is you ain't going to get yours in, in Minneapolis. Well, and that's, that's my big frustration. I think with just NBA national media is, this guy's the real deal market the hell out of him because, but we, we do have some national media that are saying we need to go to Minnesota, which is cool to right. see because when was the last time that happened? Yep. Um, but, but I, I think that with ants and, and I don't know if you heard about the whole Patrick Beverly podcast where he came out and said, you know, if he wants to win a championship, he needs to leave Minnesota and it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it wasn't well, because that, it wasn't. It wasn't no, because it, it wasn't did because. Not like the guy. Well, right. hold on. It's. It wasn't because I think people took him the wrong way, but it, it really was more of. Hey, man, the the you're you're not gonna get the respect right now from media and everyone in Minnesota. He shows love for Minnesota all the time. Okay, but but, but I I think, what what we have right now, and I trust Tim Conley a lot with what he's able to do. I, I'd, I'd be worried if we had a guy like Anthony Edwards and this team that we have currently built, 
without a guy like Conley in the position that he's in, because I think you need to maximize right now all of Anthony Edwards for the, for the entire career that he has right. in Minnesota. Yep. Because if you if you have a year that you are down and say we're going to rebuild, you got to trade him right away. You like right. because Anthony Edwards should not be on losing. Anthony Edwards should be in the playoffs every year. Right. So that's well, how you're going to get him to stay. Okay, but as far as as that goes with Minneapolis just being a flyover state or whatever, you know, it, the Bucks did win an NBA championship and the Greek freak ain't going anywhere. Not that I know of. Um and you know, if I had a choice between Minneapolis and Milwaukee, what do you think I'm going to choose? And it's not because I'm biased. Have you been to Milwaukee? Enough said. Okay, right. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that you can win an NBA championship here and still uh, be marketed in the way that you want, whether it's locally or nationally. But, you know, with the exception of fuck Reggie Miller, did you see that, what he said? What the top time, 11 man. teams at both conferences and the Wolves didn't even make his top 11? That was that was from preseason that he put that on there. Now he he righted the ship come uh, on the the Grizzlies game. He was on the pro, the the broadcast with Kevin Harlan, um, and so he, he you know he was like you know it's my bad, but okay yeah that was embarrassing. Right, right. Well, I didn't, and I guess I didn't know it was preseason because preseason I would not have put him top eleven. I wouldn't put him top twenty. I don't think the Wolves. I would would not have. You know, and now you got Barkley eating his own words as well, right? Like he's got it because he was still saying at the beginning of the year, there's no way that those two big men are going to be able to play. It was a complete debacle, Seward's folly, if you will, to, to bring Gobert in. And now, you know, and unfortunately we played Memphis that night and by halftime, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. I was right. And then he had to change his tune by the end of the evening, but Man, I like it that at least there are folks that are are talking about about the, the Minnesota Timberwolves right now. Um, wow, that's a great conversation. I, earlier, you know, it, it, we don't really have a monologue, but you know, when it, when I was setting everything up, I I said we had been on a hiatus for about a week, and it was not because I was so depressed about what happened in in the NFL. And and I do want to make um, some reference to that, so. In week one of the NFL playoffs, the Green Bay Packers uh, Green Bay Packers beat a Dallas Cowboy team. Uh, the Detroit Lions beat a Los Angeles Rams team. You know, and I, I thought, okay, well, the mountains should cover us. The hills, you know, are crying out. And you know what? I won. I wasn't overly it wasn't like I couldn't get out of bed the next day because the Packers and the Lions both won. The the point with the Packers that I'm gonna make is it was Packers, Dallas Cowboys. To me, that's like, well North Korea just declared war on Iran. Well gee, I don't know who I'm gonna go with here. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like I really want both a I know it's impossible in a playoff game, but I want both teams to lose. Like, I hate the Packers so much, and then the Cowboys are just that far away. And so for for them to just lay a big shit burger, which we knew they were going to do because it's the Dallas Cowboys, I wasn't – it just didn't affect me like most Green Bay Packer losses do. Um, and I don't know which if, – if Green Bay is North Korea or Iran right now, I, I don't – anyways, that didn't bother me. Um, one thing that I was not happy with, uh, was when Detroit won Dan Orvlosky. I don't know if you know who he is. He's a former Detroit Lions quarterback. Uh, the only thing I remember for him in his playing days was running the ball out of the back of the end zone uh, against the Vikings for a safety because he had no idea. What Anyways, he says, Oh, and we just showed them that we could, the Lions can play with anybody in this playoffs. And wait a minute, dude. You beat a 10 and 7 team that barely made the playoffs at home, and you beat them by one point. Then you played a Tampa Bay team. Once again, no one knew they were going to be in the playoffs or not. 
And it, it wasn't exactly like you you put them to bed right away or anything like that. Tampa had a, a good opportunity to win the game. Um, with Green Bay, I knew that midnight was going to strike very, very, very soon. The, the Niners were not – now, I thought the Niners were going to absolutely kill the Packers um, the other day. They are much more physical. Uh, they have veteran players. The Packers are a young team. And I was like, nope, it's a, a done deal. Um, but I knew that Cinderella's pumpkin was no longer going to be a carriage any longer. Um, and the fact is the Packers still could have been in the, in the NFC championship game. Um, the Lions, I wasn't overly impressed with them. I think that Cinderella is calling for them once again against the Niners uh, next week. But your thoughts on the NFC, at, first of all. Well, I sure hope the Lions, that that, that story is over uh, next week because good God, that franchise and that those fans piss me off. Um, just some of the nastiest motherfuckers I've ever. Wait, what? Lions? I don't even know any Lions fans. You, Are, oh my God. Oh yeah. You but you're know? not, you're not on Twitter though. Uh, those motherfuckers. And wow. Dude. I don't know you to use the F word. And he's, <sighs> hey, well, he's, he's, in he's fired up. <laughs> no, those, uh, a couple people were celebrating all the injuries that, that they had to, to Hawkinson and to, um, what was the, the, the Rams guy that they, their tight end, um, I can't remember, but well, now um, wait a minute. no, you know, it is still is Detroit. Okay. So, well, and so, so the, the big, the big was deal fun. was Dan Campbell, you know, who Dan Campbell used yep. to play for. Yeah. The 2009 New Orleans saints who the right. Vikings know too well. So that, that is a, a, and, and then all the fans are complaining and telling, saying that the Vikings are some of the worst fans out there uh, mm-hmm. because they're complaining that, that 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 we're mad that you 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 injured Hawkinson and you're you're cheering about it and good God it, it is it's oh it's everyone against Detroit and it's like yeah because you're bitches like I, I yeah. you just I, I I see and I was more sympathetic to Detroit just because you know that they're like the 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 Cleveland of the NFL you know what I mean like I, I think I think everyone I think they easily could be but with the way that and I understand. Y'all never win, so you don't know what it's like. Right. But, but the way you're acting is is just, and I, it's not a huge deal. But I one, I don't like celebrating celebrating injuries, especially when you do it. It's the same guy that hits. You know that hit was intentional, and it's the guy that was on the Saints, the Saints team from 2009. The coach preaches that, and you had a sign cheering about it. And then oh, we're the bad true. guys when 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 we talk about it. So. Not a huge fan, and and I think everyone wanted Detroit to be that way of like, hey, let's let's root for the underdog. I understand they're in a division and everything, but man, every Vikings fan on Twitter, it it is a it is a slaughter right now. Wow, um, it is. I, you know, so, I, I guess ignorance is bliss. I'm a happy person because I I don't keep up on that. I, uh, to your point, I like yeah, like the Lions are everyone's darling right now. You know what I mean? And I think there are a lot of folks that are cheering. I'm not on Twitter, so I don't know what's being said between. And like I say, it's still Detroit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I think you've got the state of California and the state of Minnesota cheering for the 49ers. For that's about it next week. Yeah. See, and I was never threatened by the Lions, so I. I but I, I I do think that it's gonna now. The other thing, um, you know, because it was a point that. Our buddy Gus brought up, he said, you know, the the Packers are playing with house money. Um, So basically it doesn't matter. And and I'm going to get to the NFC Norris division in a second here. Um, But man, I, I'm just happy that we're, we're finally separating the wheat from the chaff because there were a lot of teams playing on Saturday and Sunday that were playing with house money. You know what I mean? The Green Bay Packers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, Houston to some in some respects, um, where you know I, I made the point to one of my buddies. I was like, "Now think about this: if the Packers had won, which they had every chance to do, and the Bucks won, you're talking about two nine and eight teams that are playing in the NFC Championship game." And I don't have a problem with that because. 
We talked about that's why you play the games. You get hot at the right time. We always talk about it in baseball. But in football, <coughs> Green Bay <coughs> excuse me, got hot at the right time, right at the end of the year, and I never expected them to get to the playoffs, much less win a game, and should have been in the NFC title game. Right. And and so I don't have a problem with with nine and eight teams making making a run, but I'm just saying, man, it, it, it should be time for the teams that are supposed to. It's not Madden. You know, you're not playing a game where like, oh, the number one seed got knocked out right away by this. And so, you know, I, I do like that about football, but shoot, man, it is time for, for teams to, to step up. Well, I agree, but I do want to touch on. I I got a lot of heat for for saying that, you know, back when the Vikings were were kind of in contention, still, I got a lot of heat for saying you absolutely want the Vikings in the playoffs, and I was like, no, no, we we, we got to get the draft pick. We we no. want the tenth pick or whatever. And I mean, you look at the Packers, look at the Bucks. Like they, I'm sure there were definitely some fans that said, "Why are we trying to win when we can go get this quarterback? We can go do whatever." Right. And and you look at like, hey man, you, you see what can happen. You you can't win the Super Bowl sitting on the couch, you know. Yeah. And and you, I understand it might not look like the Bucks did not think they were were going to be in the division round. Absolutely, right. like the the. The beginning of that season, they had no idea that was going to happen, and they made it to the division round. So, shit happens. Like it, 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 right. it can happen. But, but to your point, like, yeah, man, I, I would like to see the 49ers just destroy the Lions. I would like to see. Right. I would have I, liked to see the Bills win. Um, right. I I think it will be different because what I saw over this weekend, um, you know, I really thought. Houston was going to beat Baltimore just because Baltimore has a tendency of not showing up uh, in, in matters like this. And which scares me for the chiefs game. Cause I don't need to see another super bowl with the chiefs. In it. Well, okay. We'll get to that in a second. Um, I, I was really pulling for the Houston Texans. Um, I like CJ Stroud. I like he, he's a Jesus boy. Um, and I was really pulling for him, but to me that game started out, like every first round team that has a buy to start out, right? They, in the first half, it was a 10, 10 game. Baltimore looked sluggish. Eventually they figured it out. San Francisco had the, the week off. They got the Packers at home, the youngest team in the NFL. And, you know, they, they got lucky because the Packers apparently stole the Minnesota Vikings playbook by missing a field goal that would have put them up by 10 and then throwing a cross your body interception on a play that should not have, not have happened. So, I mean, you know, uh, condolences Packer fans, but Vikings fans are used to that shit. Um, hey, isn't a green Bay's kicker, Daniel Carlson brother. Yes. Oh, brother. Okay. That should tell you everything <laughs> right there. Okay. But, um, you know, so to me, and I, I, I really don't know if I like the first round bye because you know if the Vikings were a first or were the the number one seed and they had that week off, you know they won't show up, you know, on 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 the next the next week. So um that's to me what I saw. I mean, Baltimore is a really solid football team. Um, so I I think I mean I, I really thought Buffalo was gonna was gonna beat Kansas City. I mean, that was Mahomes' first road game in the playoffs in his career. Yep. Uh, the first time I think that he was not a favorite in a playoff game. Uh, I really thought they had him. I think Josh Allen is a stud. I, I really think that he is uh, a quarterback that you, you know, and it's unfortunate because he never made it to the big game, uh, but he is an absolute stud. Uh, you know, my prediction, hey, Baltimore KC, you would think that Baltimore is going to run the table. You would think that they should make the Super Bowl, but you're talking about a guy and a team that have made six straight AFC championship games with whatever luck this way or that way. It doesn't matter. Baltimore ain't been there in a while. So there is that tangible uh, on the other side. Do I think Detroit has a shot in hell? Nope. But that's why you play the games. I mean, I, I really think it should be Baltimore, San Francisco. 
I would love I would love that matchup. Um, I think it would be I think it'd be good. I, I I think that I mean the Chiefs are basically the Astros of of football, right? I mean they they in every the Astros are have been to the ALCS like yeah. nine years in a row or whatever. The yeah. Chiefs are are getting that way. So it's it's just it's getting old, but also I just it is, but you know. Fans. It, it, it's like it's been said before. If you don't like it, then stop them. You know what I mean? And, and, Absolutely. So, um, and, and I really thought that they were they were going to get that done last night. Now, um, it's interesting because I do want – I know we're going over. I, I do want to bring this up, though, because I, I, I wondered about um, your, your thoughts on this. But before I get to that, um, you know, one thing that I think – now, you already kind of gave us your opinion about Campbell – um, my, my boy put it out there. He, he really likes Dan Campbell and, and there is something to be said about the culture in Detroit is completely different. Once that guy took the reins, um, I don't get into the whole cheating and this and that, or what's being said. I just know, uh, the difference in what I see, uh, at Ford field by, by the fans, um, the kind of team. Now, this is a team that I'm looking at is going to be probably pretty good for the next few years. And it appears that Green Bay being the youngest team in the NFL and, you know, apparently, I don't, I don't know, you know, like what's Maryland known for? Crab cakes and football. What's Wisconsin named for or known for? Uh, cheddar worst and quarterbacks, you know, and everybody wants to say that they've got their, their, their mint third quarterback in the last 30 years. Um, and so now when you look at the Vikings, it's not just like, oh, we got to beat the Packers this year. Now you're looking at, are we going to be fighting for the third spot in the division now for the next fucking five years? It, that, it, it's getting interesting. I, I still think this team is is really good, and we still got some young young guys that are are really good. I, I it, It's getting close to that, though. I think especially it depends what you do at quarterback. I mean, if you go rookie – it'll probably be that way fighting for third <laughs> potentially, but yeah, but we're talking uh, about several years down the road, the way, the way that it's shaping up right now. Well, and I, I, I can't see the bears getting any worse with, with where they're being able to draft here. So I, I and don't know. Wh why, what, what are they going to do with Justin Fields then? Cradle. They, they, so they are completely done and they're going to you're thinking, I mean, they have to, right? You have the. Well, I don't know. I, I, I can see. I, I saw one thing where you would, you would trade for a for a quarterback, or you, you know, they say fuck it and sign Russell Wilson, and then draft Marvin Harrison, or I don't know. It, it, it'll be interesting. I, it, as much as I would hate to see Russell Wilson in my division, well, no, I think we beat him every time. But oh yeah, I love Russell Wilson in my division. Yes. Him ten him years and, ago, no, but yep. Oh, I didn't, him no, in Chicago yeah. would be kind of interesting. Oh wait, and I don't want him in the division wearing purple. Okay, and I wing in. Okay, all right. Uh, last question on the NFL because I couldn't believe this happened. So I'm I'm watching um, the game. Uh, well, it was I believe it was that yeah, was the the early game, and just out of the blue. Uh, my, my, my two friends brought up um, an NFL rule and, and it was funny because P he's like, I hate that rule. He talked about the fumble that goes into the back of the end zone. Uh, and then obviously the ball comes out of the 20 for the opposing team. <coughs> and <coughs> I've got a great story that I want to end this with. Um, but I, but I mentioned, I was like, yep, I remember playoff game, blah, blah, blah. And uh, P was like, no, I hate that rule. I think it's terrible. And then it happened. Like three hours later, it happened in the Kansas City Buffalo game. And my point was, yeah, you know, it sucks if you're on the wrong side, but they've they've made the game so harder for the defense. As far as defensive backs, what's pass interference, what's defensive holding? You can't even breathe on the fucking quarterback without it being a personal foul. So the defense is to me, it's always like two on one offense versus defense. That's the one rule that I'm sorry, you didn't cross the, the plane with the ball 
if it goes out of the end zone, we're not going to reward the offense for fumbling, right? So yeah. your your thoughts, because it, I didn't get into it with my buddies. I was just like, yep, I know what you're talking about. And they're like, nope, I hate that rule. But what else would you do with it? Well, I don't know because, well, it's a rule I forgot about because it, it happened. I'm watching it. I'm like, wait, now what? Like, yep. I, I was like, oh, shit. Like, it's a, it's a turnover. It was a game changer. Yeah. Um, and – I, to, to your point, like, I don't know what you would do with the offense because it's where do you, where do you, you put the ball where he fumbled, but then it's just, that's, that doesn't make sense to me because the offense didn't technically recover it. And so I don't, I like it because I, I'm not it's exactly yeah. what, yeah, it's exactly what the ball. Because I don't think the up. offense should be not rewarded, but I don't even think that they should be given a break if, if they turn the ball over. And it, it does go to the back of the end zone, which is a touchback. Uh, I, I don't know what else you do. I, I don't think the offense should get it. If if, if they fumble the, the football and nobody recovers it, I don't think you should go, oh, you know what? Nice try. You know, he, he's learned his lesson. Let's give him a present. You know, and, yeah. and, so, and so I didn't. Now, I do want to close on this because, you know, it, it's, it's nostalgia, it's history, but – as we were talking about this rule, and I, man, I love this story. Uh, I said right away, I said, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. In 1996, the Minnesota Vikings were playing the Dallas Cowboys in a playoff game. And uh, the Cowboys took the lead 7-0 right away. In the end of the first quarter, Amp Lee, which is a guy I'm sure you've never heard of, you know, caught a screen across the middle from like the 50 yard line and he was gone. And I was like, we're going to tie this up. And he gets caught at the two yard line and fumbles out of the back of the end zone. And the Cowboys go on to score. I don't know. Something like the next 23 points in the game. I believe we were down like 29 to zero, maybe 29, seven at the half. It changed the whole course of the game. Like we would have tied that game up. And then it would have been interesting to see what the defense would do. Instead, it took points off the board or a chance to put any on the, on the board, and we got annihilated. And and so I, I do understand, like, P's point on that, that it, it's a game changer. But then again, that's that's the rules. So, I you know, I don't have a problem. Now, the best part of that story is I was in the house that I live in right now, which used to be my folks' house. And in 96, you know, that was at a time when I was not 21, but in the younger years of being able to go to a bar and tell my parents, yeah, I'm going to a bar and, you know, okay. But we chose to watch the game in the basement of this house, me and about four or five friends. And my folks were upstairs. We were downstairs and, you know, so we could keep the cussing to a minimum. And uh, at halftime, we all got up. It was, I think it was 29 zip or 29 seven at the app. And me and my friends were, were pretty upset. And so we're all putting our jackets on and, and my dad catches me at the, at the back door. And he said, what are you guys doing? And I said, every year it's one and done. We have these great seasons. We get to the playoffs and we're one and out. And it, it's not even entertaining. Like two years before that we lost to the Chicago bears and Steve Walsh at home and got smoked. I said, I, I just can't take it anymore. We're going to the bar and we're going to, we're going to, I don't even know if we're going to watch the second half. And my dad's just looking at me and he, he's got this look on him. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of being an asshole right now. I know it's coming. And he goes, you know, you guys think you're pretty tough. huh?" And I said, yeah, we put up with this team and all their bullshit every year. And now we're, we're walking away. It, we, yes, we are tough. And my dad looked at me and I'll just never forget the look in his eye because that was back when he actually cared about the NFL. He, he looked at me and he said, you haven't lived through four Super Bowl losses. You think you're tough. You're not shit. And man, that has stuck with me the rest of my life, man, because as much as I piss and moan, he's right. I never sat through four Super Bowl losses, man, in a decade's time. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's awesome. I love that story. That's that great. a great story. That's a great story. Okay. Final thing, because I know we're going over, but I couldn't believe what I heard this morning. 
So apparently, and I didn't hear what the the final tally was about MLB voting, but I had heard that uh, I think Mariano Rivera was the only unanimous first ballot Hall of Famer, right? And I heard a story this morning that Joe Maurer had all of the votes except for one. And you know who the vote, the, the guy that didn't vote for him, Lavelle Neal would not. And he said, because he's not a first ballot hall of famer. And I agree wholeheartedly. I still don't think the motherfuckers a hall of famer, but he's going to make the hall of fame. He might be first ballot too. What is this world coming to? I don't get it. I, I'm not trying to hate on Joe Maurer, but, but it sounds like you are. I, well, <laughs> Guilty as charged, then, I guess. I, you know, I mean, I, I'm, you again, gotta, you I, gotta explain to me, Joe Maurer, the first ballot motherfucking Hall of Famer. No way. He's a Hall of Famer. He is absolutely well, give a you Hall of maybe Famer. Maybe that, but Not, I, I, I don't know that he's a first ballot, but he's a Hall of Famer. Wow. Um, you know, Speaking of my father, sometimes, you know, he, there were times when he just said, you know, I might have gotten to the age where the whole world is passing me by right now. And I just don't understand it anymore. And I might be at that point right now because I I don't I don't get that. I I really thought eh, Maurer being a being a Hall of Famer is, is going to be tricky. And it's going to be one of those that just keep going. Oh, he, he needs. A few more votes, a few more. Nope, didn't get it. You know, think about how long Tony Oliva had to wait to get in the in to the Hall of Fame, and this motherfucker is going to get in on his first try. I, I don't get the world we live in. It, it's interesting. I didn't think he would be at this point. I really, I don't think anyone did. And, but I don't know. It, not sure if he'll make it. I think he's he's close, but. Um, and what's the reason? Because he didn't make waves in Major League Baseball. He didn't say, well, well the Bible doesn't say that they're dinosaurs, so there's no such thing as dinosaurs. Is it the fact that he was just so vanilla ice cream? He just didn't make waves. And it, his the, the things that he did were remarkable in some regards, but they were not right. accepted. I, I think the end of his career to Minnesotans and maybe yourself as well are just overshadowing what he had. The end of his career was his last 10 years in the fucking majors. He didn't do any of the things I'm talking about until, or I, I'm sorry, he didn't do any of the things that we're talking about that gets you into the Hall of Fame in his last eight years. So let's take, um, I'm trying to think of someone, uh, well, Take Joel Embiid, right? Never won a championship. Right. He's been an MVP, I think, twice now. Let's say his next 10 years, he falls off. Is he a Hall of Famer? It's hard to compare. But I, 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 would I, say just... no. I would say no. I would say no. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I'm not trying to hate on the guy at all. I just, well, maybe I am trying to hate on him. Like, like you said, I, I just don't, I, I just don't see it. And for it to, for the golden boy to be that quickly acclimated when there are so many people on the ballot that just aren't going to get, they're just not going to get it. And, and for him to just waltz there and uh, it just sticks in my crop just a little bit. I'll be, I, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Okay. Uh, what was today the final day or not? I think there's some more. Okay. All right. Well, Twins fans, we will keep you updated on that. Uh, I have pretty much, I know we've gone over an hour. I didn't think we were going to get everything that we got in tonight, uh, but love talking to you again this evening, Noah. Uh, predictions quickly before uh, for AFC NFC championship game. Give me Niners. Give me Ravens. Okay, that's, that's what we're going to go with. Uh, you heard it here first on the show to be named later. Uh, for my partner in crime and sports, Noah Storzinger, I am Johnny Boss. We will see you very shortly. Have a great night. Thank you so much.